Hello friends, this is Riot and it's time for more Trails of Code Steel Legend of Heroes. I thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoy. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, let me know what you think, I do always appreciate it. And we need to go to Straight Australia, the school for girls. And that would be... a snack district. I don't have time to do anything else once we arrive in the snack district. Should we get going? Traveling to the snack district will cause the main story to advance. I think we're good. We should be able to travel there fine. Got all our quests done. Let's take the tram. Gotta be there by five o'clock. Chop chop. Well, that was pretty interesting with the whole Phantom Thief B. It's quite an interesting character. I feel like we're gonna have to fight him later on, for sure. Ah, the girls' school. Those uniforms are cute. Like, who are you? They were wearing the same uniform as Reen's sister. Yeah, they must go to St. Australia too. So, the famous St. Australia Girls School is around here, huh? It's supposed to be a combined middle and high school exclusively for the young ladies of the nobility. Yeah, this is one part of the capital that the masses have no reason to visit. Although, I can at least support the school's commitment to fostering chastity and rejecting materialism. You seem to know an awful lot about a fancy girls' school. No, no, I don't. This is all just common knowledge. Anyway, let's go and wait by the front gate. Yeah, those were the instructor's orders. I'm feeling kind of nervous, actually. Why would you? <laughs> to men, this academy must seem clad in the mysterious, impenetrable aura of feminine nobility. wondering did you not want to come here Laura my father did recommend it to me but they offered no classes in the martial arts that alone was reason enough to look elsewhere <laughs> I can totally understand that though I get the feeling Laura would cause a real uproar if she went to a school for genteel young ladies yeah I can picture the chaos now oh I have a number of acquaintances who attend there, and from all I hear, it does seem to be a wonderful school. I've heard that even Princess Alfin herself is a student there. I've noticed that. I've heard that too. Princess who? You've seriously never heard of her? I know you're not from Erebonia, but even still. <laughs> to be fair, I wouldn't be surprised if plenty of Erebonians didn't know who she is. Princess Alfin is the daughter of our reigning emperor, His Majesty Emperor Eugent. She's supposed to be as sweet as an angel and popular with everyone. Is that so? <laughs> Actually, I believe she's the same age as Fee. Oh, so she's 14? Is that it? And Elise is 15? I've had the opportunity to meet her once before. She truly is as charming as the rumors suggest. I figured as much. I've seen photographs of her plenty of times in magazines, though. I've never had the opportunity to meet her. Sounds like she's in the same school year as Elise, come to think of it. Oh, maybe Elise is 14 too. Okay. She has a twin brother too, Prince Cedric. He's the crown prince of Erebonia. Oh, right. I think I've seen a picture of the prince in a magazine before. Dark blonde hair, like Eusis' brother, right? Oh, I think you're thinking of Prince Oliver. He's Cedric and Alfin's older brother. Why isn't he the crown prince then? I've heard the reason is that his mother was a commoner. It seems like a stupid reason to deny him the right of succession, but that's how nobles do things. I feel like I've been hearing his name a lot lately. He made a big splash when he came back from the burrow aboard that airship. Uh, you know the one, right? When he traveled of Joshua and Estelle. Ah, uh, you must be referring to his return aboard the Arcel after the crisis in the burrow was put to rest. The burrow's how you say it. Okay, I'll try to remember that. 
Yeah, I remember seeing that. It really made a big impact. I'd never seen an airship that looked so white and elegant before. I believe my father went to welcome the prince back in his capacity as Imperial Governor, too. And yeah, now that you mention it, that does seem to be when I started hearing his name around a lot more. Oh, you're all here already. The other team. Ah, you made it. <laughs> it's good to see you all again. You're a bunch of early birds, aren't you? Well, we just about finished up everything we had to do when we got the call to meet here. Were you able to finish up everything on your end, too? <laughs> As if we'd leave any loose ends. If not for our unfamiliarity with the city, we would have been finished this morning. <sighs> Every time. Looks like getting these two to kiss and make up will be an uphill battle. <laughs> well, some say that when someone gets under your skin, it means you really care about what they think. Wait, did you two... Kiss and make up? They did. <laughs> I figured the girls would be the first to notice. <laughs> of course. I, um... I apologize for any worry I've caused you. We're fine now. Really? That's great! <laughs> it sure is. Maybe after this field study is over, we can get together and spend the night talking in one of our rooms. Sounds good. <laughs> The thought of a class 7 pajama party makes me a little embarrassed. That's girls for you. <laughs> girls and sleepovers go together like jam and toast, huh? Five o'clock. That must be Heimdall Cathedral's bell. It has a solemn, stately sound, wouldn't you say? It sounds so different from how it does in the Ost District. Though that makes sense considering the distance. That bell ringing must mean it's five o'clock, which means it's almost the time we were supposed to meet here. Rain? Oh, Elise. Yes, Elise is here. Elise? What are you doing here? Wait, I guess this is your school, so where else would you be? Um, yes. I see all of your classmates are with you, too. <laughs> it's only been a week since we saw you, hasn't it? <laughs> well, we were told to meet here. Wait a minute. Are you the ones? The nine guests I was told to expect at five o'clock sharp? Well, there are nine of us in class seven. Wait, what? Then that would mean you're the one we were told wanted us to come here? Actually, I suspect that would be a friend of mine. Why does she always have to be such a mischief maker? I swear. She could have at least given me a little warning that you were coming. Um, Elise? Anyway, where are my manners? Welcome to St. Astraya Girls' School. I hope you'll enjoy your visit. Right this way. Thank you, Elise. You're so sweet. So who wanted us to meet there? Sarah or the princess? I'm thinking it might be the princess. Drink the start of your girl school. Eh? But boys? I don't think I've seen that uniform before. From Thor's military academy. My brother studied there when he was younger. I oh, wasn't he a military emperor. Oh, that's going too fast. Lady Laura! <laughs> it's Lady Laura! And Sir Eusis! Mm. <laughs> that red is so cute, yes. They're all busybodies. Ugh, I can feel their stairs boring holes in my head. <laughs> Pay them no mind. <laughs> we certainly do seem to be the stars of the show today. <laughs> and Laura's as popular as ever. I can't say that being admired doesn't feel nice, but... Please don't be too hard on them. We don't have many opportunities to meet people from outside the school. You think that boy in the front is a commoner? I'm not sure, but either way, he sure is, he looks so handsome. How do you think they know Elise? Actually, you're right. This is kind of uncomfortable. Are they all the same age as you, Elise? 
I don't know and I don't care. Calm down, Elise. It's okay. Just a question. Rosen got in. What's in here? It looks like an indoor garden. This is the Academy's Rose Garden. The person who called you here is waiting inside. Who did call us here anyway? Whoever they are, they must have considerable social standing. Your Highness, I brought the guests. I knew it was the princess. I knew it. Thank you. Please show them in. Oh. No way. Hey, Elise, is that... You don't need to ask when you already know. Now, if you'll follow me... Oh, nice. <gasps> I... I knew it! The princess herself. <laughs> oh, that was cute. Princess Alfin. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen of Class 7. My name is Alfin. Alfin Rice Arner. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. That's nice I got to meet the princess. wanted to discuss with everyone please go right ahead ah <sighs> well that aside it's been a long time since i last saw both of you yusis and laura i'm glad to see you're both well uh, likewise your highness <laughs> you've become even more fetching since we last met oh thank you i was rather hoping that you'd decide to enroll in saint Astraya too but it seems you chose to attend Thor's after all. Well, I've committed myself to following the way of the sword, and Thor's gives me a place to hone my skills. I apologize for not being able to live up to your expectations. Ah, <sighs> first I lost Angelica to Thor's, then you too. Oh, she knows Angelica. Perhaps I should just transfer there next year myself. Y your Highness. <laughs> Got you to look. B but I... Well, she seems lively. She seems far more easygoing than I was expecting. I've heard plenty about her, but none of that prepared me for meeting her in person. So, this is what it's like to be in the presence of royalty. It's actually rather overwhelming. I can see why people always compare her to an angel. <laughs> me too. Please don't worry about me. Well, I still have much to learn before I feel like I deserve my status among the nobility. I've been blessed with wonderful friends, and I'm enjoying life here at the Academy. Well, she does seem to have at least one wonderful friend. That she does. Kind of an understatement when that friend happens to be Princess Elfin. <laughs> I'm particularly happy to finally be able to meet you, Reen Schwarz. Oh, was that so? Elise has told me so much about you. Your Highness! Um, I'm honored that you'd say so. Elise always mentions in her letters what a great friend she has. As her brother, I wanted to thank you for that. Reen? Oh, it's so refreshing. You're every bit the person Elise says you are. Perhaps even more so. Huh? Actually, I have a teensy-weensy favor to ask. Do you think I could join Elise in thinking of you as my dear brother as well? Oh my. What? Y your Highness! You see, Elise has spoken of you so often that in my heart, you've already come to feel like family. And now that I've had the opportunity to meet you, I fear I simply can't suppress these feelings any longer. I have two brothers already, of course, so I'm sure it won't take long to adjust. I... 
I couldn't possibly. I mean... That's enough, your highness. Aw, oh, don't be so stingy. Surely it wouldn't hurt to share him with me a little. <laughs> anyway, that aside... She's funny. The reason I called you here today was not to talk with me. There is someone else who would like to meet you. Is there now? Who might that be? Why? It's not like we're famous. Who do you mean? Hey, isn't that... A guitar? No, a lute? <laughs> oh, it seems he's arrived! Oh! Huh. I apologize for keeping you waiting. Oh, the brother! The prince! It's a pleasure to see you again. <laughs> and you as well, young lady. Well, I trust everyone here has been making themselves comfortable. Who's this guy? I'm not sure, though I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. I serve as a music instructor in the hallowed halls of this fine academic institution. Oh, you teach there? In truth, I am ever on the hunt for that elusive mayfly we call love. But that might raise eyebrows at a girl's school. Yeah, that might raise more than a bit of eyebrows. That might raise some worrisome suspension for you in jail time. But whose pulse would not quicken wandering into this untainted cloister of dew-eyed maidens? Ah, oh, the romance. Huh? Could he be? <laughs> I think that's quite enough. Wow. Any more of that and our guests may start edging toward the exit. Ah, oh, I can always count on you to never miss a beat, my dear sister. Wait, so this is... Whoa. Indeed. The eldest prince, Prince Olivert. Tis I, Olivert Ricey Arner, also known by some unscrupulous individuals as the debaucherous prince. I also serve as Thor's military academy's ornamental chairman of the board. Oh, do you? Nice. It's a pleasure to finally meet you, ladies and gentlemen of Class 7. That was cool. Very nice to see him. You going to play his loot for us? Communion room. Oh, fancy meal. to admit, I was surprised to learn that you're the chairman of the board of directors, your highness. I'd heard that the chairman was a member of the imperial family, but still. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Who would expect the infamous prodigal son to chair a committee at a prestigious academy like Thor's? I suppose it's not surprising they'd rather keep it hushed up, though. It wouldn't exactly be great for the school's image. That's surprisingly forthright coming from you. Is it really true, though? I mean, that you were the one responsible for establishing Class 7, Your Highness? Oh, really? That was his doing? Nice. Indeed, I was. You see, it's always been a tradition that a member of the Imperial family serves as chairman of the board. At first, I wore the title and name only, but I had a change of heart after my vacation in Liberal two years ago. You were in Liberal back then? That would put your visit during the incident that occurred there, correct? Right. All I've done since I returned to Erebonia has been inspired by my experience during the crisis in Liberal. As a result, fruitless though they may prove to be, I've set a number of plans in motion. One of which is to bring the winds of change to Thor's military academy. A gust of fresh air, if you will. Winds of change, huh? I can only assume you're referring to our class? Then the one who decided to throw both commoners and nobles into the same class was... Yes, the idea was mine. Although, the selected students also had to have a high aptitude with the Arcus units, too. 
I think I'm finally starting to understand the reasoning behind Class 7, and why we're being sent all over Erebonia on these field studies. To show us firsthand and give us cause to consider the conflict between the two factions. That is the purpose behind our field studies. Is it not, Your Highness? That is one of the reasons, yes. However, my foremost intention was to show you that during your lives, you will encounter many obstacles and conflicts. Not just between factions, but between the capital and the provinces, tradition and technology, even between nations. In these turbulent times, I thought that this would provide the hands-on education today's promising youths need. We need up-and-comers who can think and act independently to face tomorrow's challenges head-on. That makes sense. Wow, that's quite a plan. I can't help but feel a little unsure whether we can live up to such high expectations. Hearing your explanation has, at the very least, cleared up many of the doubts I've had up to this point. Class 7 does seem like an ideal environment to expand one's outlook on life. I feel like going through everything we have so far has brought us closer to doing exactly that. Yep. Marvelous. I'm so pleased to hear it. Just listening to you makes me feel even more certain that establishing Class 7 was the right decision. Happy you did it. It's been a good class. Especially since while the idea itself was mine, I have no real say in how the classes run day to day. Even so, I still hope to meet all of you at least once, if only to tell you all this. That was when Alfin stepped in and offered to set up this little meeting. I see. <laughs> well, I could hardly refuse such a sincere request from my brother. But it also presented me a fine chance to finally meet Elise's beloved brother, as I've always wanted You're to- You're trying to steal Elise's beloved brother away. Y your Highness! <laughs> Oh, they both changed. Lise and Alfin. Thank you for taking the time to tell us all of this, Your Highness. I feel like now that I know, I want to live up to the promise you saw in Class 7. Thing is, am I right in assuming that Class 7 doesn't exist just to fulfill your progressive ideal? What are you? Oh? The board has its chairman, of course, but three directors besides. My older brother Rufus, Imperial Governor Karl Regnitz, and Irina Reinford of the Reinford Group. Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it... They do seem to have certain expectations for us. <laughs> Precisely. As I mentioned, I no longer have anything to do with how Class 7 is run. That authority lies with the directors. As you're keenly aware, Rufus and Governor Regnitz sit on opposite sides of the factional divide. And while Chairman Irina is mostly involved with Class 7's technology, like the Arcus, her intentions are a mystery to me. And it's those three who decide where you'll travel for your field study. Is it now? So it's them is doing it. I thought it was Sarah's doing. Is that right? When you put it that way, it does make it seem like some kind of bargaining is taking place behind the scenes. It was one of the conditions they gave in exchange for allowing Class 7 to be established. I'll admit, I hesitated to allow it, but I decided to place my hopes in you. We believed then, as we still do, that one day, you all will be a great light that can push back the darkness of this country. <laughs> well, I suppose when I put it that way, it sounds positively heroic. But that's just me. Don't feel too pressured by it. Don't know why Alexa decided to chirp in, but okay. Your students, first and foremost. Reach out and grab that fragrant rose of school life. Join a club. Eat cheap food with your friends at midnight. Fall in love. We live but once. Make your youth count. How oh, sweet. <laughs> you know, it's weird, but hearing you say that kind of takes a load off my mind. By the way, just earlier you said that we believed the Class 7 would be a great light. Is there someone else involved with Thors who shares your vision for our class, Your Highness? There is. Principal Van Dyke. Ah, oh, the principal. Yes, he's been a, quite a good supporter for us. I once attended Thor's myself and studied under him. He gave my proposal to establish Class 7 his full backing. I see. He's been particularly considerate toward us ever since we arrived at the Academy. While he has no direct control over the running of the Academy, he does preside over the board meetings. He doesn't have direct control of the own Academy? But he's the principal. And above all, he's the one who assembled an excellent team to give you first-rate training. An excellent team, you say? Are you referring to Instructor Sarah? 
<laughs> well, she's certainly one of them. Still, coaxing her away from her former line of work certainly played a large part in giving Class 7 a great foundation. She is, after all, one of the strongest people in the Empire, and her experience makes her a natural field leader. Wait, what? Instructor Sarah? One of the strongest people in Erebonia? Exactly what experience might you be referring to? <laughs> I've even heard rumors of her daring exploits myself. She was known as the Purple Lightning. Doesn't that sound exciting? Wait, Purple Lightning? I knew it. If you two have heard of it, it must be a household name among martial artists. That's right, though I've just heard it in passing. Ah, that young ace of the Erebonian Bracer Guild, and one of the Empire's most famous bracers. She has a history full of brave feats and dangerous deeds. She was even the youngest bracer to achieve A-rank status. Back then, she was known as the Purple Lightning. Now, you know her simply as your homeroom teacher. Ah, oh, Sarah was an amazing bracer then. Oh, I can save here. Okay. Let me save! New save. Let's continue onward, I then. Oh, night has fallen. Thanks for seeing us out. I would never guess you were friends of Princess Alphen, of all people. Uh, I wish I knew how much of what she said was genuine. Uh, hey, Elise? Elise? Wow. Thank you for taking the time to come here today. Take care of your way back to your lodgings. We will. Thank you. Thanks for showing us around. <laughs> Good night. Good night, everyone. Okay. What? Just kind of ignored Rain. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> I kind of can understand where she's coming from. <laughs> I doubt anyone could have guessed that Her Highness would extend such a bold invitation to you. I'm not sure how that's my fault. It's not Rain's fault at all. I don't think it is. Ah, yes, I almost forgot. Bane, I have a small favor I'd like to ask of you. Oh, wait, that was a pass? Of me? Your Highness? Oh, you're going to ask him? <laughs> but of course. You see, tomorrow I'll be attending a garden party sponsored by the local government for the start of the festival. Or rather, Maki's father invited me to attend. Yes, I seem to recall hearing that myself. That's the one in the Crystal Garden in Mater Park, right? Indeed. Anyway, let's not waltz around the matter. I was rather hoping that you would join me as my dance partner, Reen. What? I knew she was going to ask him, but whoa, she's so bold to ask in front of everyone. Elise is freaked out. Does that mean... D do you think Her Highness knows that old saying a dance today, a wedding tomorrow? I'm sure that's fully in the realm of tabloid speculation. Still, there's no denying that many will interpret it that way. W whoa, 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 hold on a minute. I, I don't think I... I mean, it would be an honor, but it's like too great of an honor for someone like me. <laughs> oh, not at all. Your father may be a baron, but the Swordsers have long had deep ties with the Imperial family. I apologize if it comes across as rude, but inviting you would likely create less opposition than if I were to write you, sis. I see. Well, I can't deny that. You need to apologize. I find your choice rather fascinating, actually. You, sis, you're not helping. Anyway, I really don't think I'll be the man you want. Sometimes I can barely keep from tripping over my own feet. Is that so? Elise once told me that she asked you to help her practice the finer points of ballroom dancing. In fact, she says you're an excellent dancer, that you're stuffed slightly and very gracefully. Is that not true, Reen? Uh, well... I understand. 
It was rude of me to trouble you with a petition like this on such short notice. And besides, I don't suppose you would have any interest in dancing with a little girl like me. No, 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 that's not what I mean, your highness. Oof. That's my sister, all right. Who knows how to twist a knife. Your highness, please, you two Prince Olivert. Looks like they're having fun. You know what, the Imperial family was such a lively and cheerful bunch. I get the feeling they aren't all like this. Ah, oh, I see now. How could it have not crossed my mind? Perhaps the truth is you already have your heart set on someone else. Or is there someone you're already courting? <laughs> Poor Elise. Elisa too. Emma's worried. <laughs> well, do you? I'm possibly dying to know which battle maiden has conquered the battlefield of your heart. Wait, I don't... I mean... Eggs, how am I gonna get out of this one? I'm not sure how to turn her down gently. <laughs> well, well, I shall relent this time. Huh? Uh... However, next year I'll be 16, just like your sister. Oh, well, she is 15, I thought so. That's when I'll be making my debut into high society, so... I'd be very happy if you'd give my invitation some thoughts. Okay. That was awesome. Kind of feel bad Reen did reject her. Well, aren't you the lucky one? Her Highness really seems to have taken a liking to you. You really ought to have accepted her invitation. It might have led to some truly unexpected in the future. No, I doubt it. It seemed like she just took an interest in me because I'm her friend's brother. She didn't seem all that serious about it, so I figured she was trying to tease the two of us. Can't deny it seemed that way. But I got the impression that wasn't all that was going on there. You weren't the only one feeling nervous that whole time. Prince Oliver was an even more unusual person I'd heard. <laughs> no doubt about that. He seemed entertaining to be around. To think that he is the one responsible who made Class 7 possible. He seemed easygoing, but hearing him talk about our class made what we were doing feel even more important. And besides, he gave us plenty of other useful info. Yeah, including the fact that the board directors seem to have their own agenda for us. I have no idea what they're planning, but their motives seem incredibly suspicious. Agreed. Hearing about the instructor's background kind of threw me for a loop, too. I would imagine she used to be a bracer, maybe because you don't really seem around to begin with. A rank is more or less the highest you can be, too. I assume you already knew about her history fee. Yep, the guild in every Jaeger corpse. Is every Jaeger corpse main competition, after all. Probably even ran to run a few times during operations. Really? Unbelievable. <laughs> I'd almost forgotten about those good old days. Hey, instructor. Instructor? How long have you been there? Oh, looks like you finally found out about my work history, huh? I guess that kind of tarnishes my ravishing adult charm a bit then. I hate to break it to you, but you didn't have any to begin with. Shh. Did you hear an old maid sing it? Oh, sighing. Did you hear an old maid sighing? What was that? Oh, Claire. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Captain Claire? This is quite the unusual combination. I feel like Sharon's gonna pop up next. Let me be the first to assure you this wasn't my idea. But the governor asked me to tell you that tomorrow's field study is being put on hold. Instead, you get the exciting opportunity to help this lady and her goons with their evil schemes. Huh? What evil schemes? <sighs> Sarah, could you maybe not try to put them off and try before even a chance to explain? Actually, there's a matter I'd like all of you to help us with. I discussed this with the governor, and he decided that this would be the best way to handle the issue. What's going on? Now if you'd be so kind as to get on board. I'll explain everything to you at the command post in Heimdar Central Station. Something important going on? Very important?
Terrorist? What? Indeed, I'm afraid we had no choice but to define them as such. Unfortunately, we have no clue as to their aim, nor do we know the names of the group's members, its size, or its history. At present, it doesn't even seem that the terrorist group has established a name for itself. But that's a lot of unknowns. Would I be correct in assuming the man we met in Nor Highlands, who was trying to start a war as a member? You mean G? Ah. Gideon. That jerk. So he's one of them, huh? He said his name was Gideon or G or something like that. So that's what that man you encountered in North Highlands was up to. He does sound like the terrorist type. And you think he and his group are going to try something tomorrow? On the first day of the summer festival? We're currently operating under that assumption, yes. The summer festival lasts three days, but unlike festivals in the other provinces, on the first day garners most attention. It's been a month since the incident in Nord. If they intend to make their next move soon, tomorrow's a likely time. I'd have to agree. Terrorists do love their time in the spotlight, after all. And considering how easily Gideon gave you his name, I'm betting we'll start to see them acting more openly soon. First you gather arms and the other like-minded allies in secret, then you reveal yourself with a bang and keep going in quick succession. That's typical MO of terrorists. I see. And you want us to assist with countermeasures against them? Right. The RMP will be joining forces with the Heimder military police to bolster the capital's security. Unfortunately, as big as the capital is, I can't say with complete confidence that there will be no holes in our security. That's where you come in. You'll be assisting our security managers as a reserve force. Pah, it'd sure be nice if the guild was still active here. They would have come in mighty handy right about now. Yes, I don't disagree. Um, Sarah, you do know that the RMP had no involvement in the guild's withdrawal from the capital, right? Oh, really? I mean, your boss and that brother of yours could hardly make their opposition to the guild more obvious if they tried. Well, wow, those two really seem to have some misty history between them. Sure looks that way, especially when the guild is concerned. Although it sounds like your brother has been keeping busy in Crossbow recently. Who's her brother? So, what's it going to be? Whether you choose this as your field study task for tomorrow is totally up to you. If you decline, there are plenty of tasks that governors will be taking care of like you've been doing for the last two days. Our festival is a busy time after all. Lots of little details that need to be squared away. Group A is up for it. Group B too. I think I speak for Group A when I say we'll be glad to join in the anti-terrorist countermeasures. Group B feels the same. All right then. Thank you for your assistance, everyone. Now, let's move right along to confirming the patrol routes you'll be following. Patrol routes, huh? Interesting, this is different. 2300, it's pretty late. There's a cat walking around. Oh, she went group A, okay. Wow, this place sure brings back memories. Up until about a year and a half ago, I'd swing by here at least once a week. Really? I wouldn't be surprised if I'd seen you around before then. Well, I did end up getting to know your sister. Be on her right, works as a piano teacher. Seriously? Wait, she did say she knew someone who worked at the guild. I guess she was talking about the instructor? Still instructor. What is it that caused the guild to withdraw from the capital? I've been wondering that for a while myself. The guild used to be pretty active here in Erebonia, right? Well, yeah. The direct cause was guild branches all over the country being blown up, but I'm sure you already know that. The culprits were Jaeger corpse hired by a nasty bunch of the, the guild was at odds with at the time. Well, still is, but anyway. Thanks to the dependable ally, we were able to defeat the Jaegers, but by then, the Imperial Governor had his eye on us. 
they started making life really difficult for us. It took away most of the guild's authority in the country, leaving our hands tied. Eventually, the branches here started closing one by one, with no real prospect of ever reopening. So that's how it was. Mm, instructor? <laughs> Don't worry. Your dad might be the city governor, but he wasn't really involved. A certain friend of his, however, was very involved. You're talking about... The Chancellor? Chancellor Gil Giliath Osborne, representative of the Imperial government, I assume? Hm, yep! Him and his cronies in the Imperial Intelligence Division. Kinda like a sister organization to the Railway Military Police. Anyway, after that, I was out of a job. That's when Prince Van Dyke came and offered me a position at the Academy. I started as a combat instructor last spring, and after that, I wound up being chosen as your class homeroom teacher. Still help off the guild from time to time, though. That's how I ended up bringing in our Jaeger princess here. Aww. Knocking off. <laughs> so that's what happened. You mentioned that a Jaeger corpse was responsible for the attacks. What was its name? Oh, it wasn't the same group Fee used to run with. They were called Jesters. Not a particularly high-ranking outfit. I see. Heard about me? Well, I did suspect that it was a different, likely different course. <laughs> From the sounds of it, the Jaeger corpse Fee belonged to was a pretty large one, though. Oh, definitely. She was a Zephyr. Their leader was this insidiously guy known as the Jaeger King. You name a combat, especially Zephyr had it covered. They were the only corps on part of the Red Constellation, which has its roots in the Berserkers of the Middle Ages. What? They caused me plenty of trouble back when I was still a full-time brazer. Look who's talking. You caused us plenty of trouble yourself. It's hard to believe this all happened to people we actually know. Yeah, yeah, it sounds more like a story out of some novel. Seriously. Anyway, the terrorists you've been hearing about lately aren't part of the Indie Jaeger Corps. I figured that was the case. Generally, Jaegers are interested in just two things. Money and fighting. That Gideon guy you encountered in the North Highlands doesn't seem to fit that description, though. If I had to guess, I'd say he's actually in some kind of deep-seated grudge. A grudge, huh? Well, it's hard to say anything for sure, but I never met him myself. From what I understand, he did seem particularly tenacious. He was definitely that. Which means we're really going to have to step it up for our patrol tomorrow. Your involvement is just a precautionary step, but if you say you're going to help, give it your best, I say. Seems like your teamwork is smoother than ever before, too, so all the better. Anyway, it's late, so get your support written and get some sleep. I'm gonna crash in one of the empty rooms upstairs. Okay. Awesome. Uh. Bye, Sarah. Good night. Ah, the instructor never changes, does she? You sure? She seemed more talkative than usual. Way more talkative, actually. Feels like she was pushing herself. Now that you mention it, she did seem far more forthcoming information than usual. Maybe she's feeling a bit weird being back at her old workplace. You might be right. So I guess we're not really in any position to be worrying about her. We'll just have to do our best according to Group B tomorrow to make sure everything goes smoothly. Agreed. Alright, the sooner we get the report written, the sooner we can get some sleep. We had an eventful day. Ooh, points. Keep up the good work. I'll try. I'll try hard. Next day, one in the morning. Why so early? Don't make me, don't make me wake up then. No, no, no. Oh, bad people. Is that Gideon? Please don't be Gideon. I feel like it is. Definitely Gideon. <laughs> the time is finally at hand. Definitely Gideon. At last, the hammer of judgment shall rouse this indolent capital from its slumber. Yeah! 
That was a lot of people. Oh no. All different types. Well, that's not good. Comrade G, all of the necessary preparations are complete. But it feels like you have so few men accompanying you. Wouldn't it be wise to call in a few others for backup? <laughs> There's nothing to fear. As long as I have this flute, not even the railway military police stand a chance of stopping us. He used that flute last time to call a big old spider to attack us, so I'm not liking that flute one bit. Tomorrow, the people of this land will at last know our name. My dear comrades, I shall be counting on you all. Yeah! Get a good rest, Group A and B. You're gonna need it, looks like. The bad guys are coming. Ooh, Monday. Field study, day three. July 26. Day of the Summer Festival. Alright, I'm going to go check on Group B before heading over to the Railway Military Police's command post. Just give me a call on your Arcus if you find anything during your patrols. Okay. We'll do, Instructor. Leave it to us. Still, I was expecting Captain Claire to be on point of our, con our point of contact. Yeah, I was expecting you to agree to cooperate with the Railway Military Police. I'm not exactly delighted about working with them, but things are looking pretty serious. I'm helping them this once and acting as your point of contact, but I won't let them forget for a minute that they owe me. Anyway, I'll see you all later. Tell Fiona thanks for the breakfast. Sure thing. Alright, we should get moving too. You guard designated areas, so we'll be patrolling them one by one, keeping an eye out for anything suspicious. Instructor Sarah said she'll contact us around noon too. Let's be off then. Ja. I'm guessing the city is going to be packed with people since it's the first day of the summer festival. That's all the more reason we need to stay especially vigilant. Okay. Well, fun. I'm going to end this episode here, but I thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. And looks like next time we'll be going on patrol, which is going to be a lot of fun. But have an awesome day, everyone. Bye.